Okay, so our first step is gonna be to match the scale of our reference. So this is the, the scene that we need to recreate. So there is a free uh, plugin that we can use. It's an awesome plugin called the FSpy. So basically this FSpy is gonna give us the ability to rematch the same proportions of uh, all these dimensions in our scene. So I'm gonna be searching for the FSpy like this and this is the official website. So simply click on it, go down like this and you'll find this download. So this one is the program. So basically we need to download two things. The first one is the program and the second one is going to be the add-on that we will be installing it into Blender. So make sure to download this this one, this version over here, the 1.03 uh, version, the one with the five, uh, 55 megabytes in size. So click on it just like this and it's going to start downloading like this. And our next step is going to be to install or to download the uh, Blender add-on. So this one over here. So you can see this for Blender users, there is an official FSpy and Portal add-on. So simply click on it and scroll down and you will find over here, let me show you, download the add-on. So click over here and it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be this one. So basically the add-on is this one, the one with the 5.3 kilobytes in size. So it's not a bigger uh, file. So simply click on it and it's gonna be downloading as well. Okay, so there we go. So we have our reference over here. We have our FSpy add-on and we have our FSpy program. So this one I just uh, extracted. It was a zip file and I extracted. Okay, so now what we need to do is to, uh, to run our FSpy. So double click on it over here. And let me bring uh, my reference. So I'm gonna drag my reference from here and let's put it on the FSpy like this. After that, I'm gonna be uh, animating this image so that you can be able to see it even more better. So now what we need to do is to match these, you can see that we have these axes. So our goal is to match these axes with the most obvious lines in our reference. So you can see over here that we have some lines, some uh, perspective lines that we need to follow. For example, we have this sidewalk, we have this one on the top. So basically we have a variety of lines. So these are ones are for the horizontal lines. Same thing over here, you can follow this one over here. For the vertical lines, it's going to be easier. So all you have to do is to follow, for example, these vertical lines. Okay, so the first thing, I'm going to keep our first vanishing point axis set at X. And the second one, I'm going to switch it to the minus Z, just like this. So now we're having the blue, blue lines and red lines. So let me uh, put, I'm going to go with this one, this line over here. So hold shift so that you can zoom on it. So drag and hold shift and let's put this one right over there. And the second point is going to be on top. Hold shift and let's put it exactly over there. The second one, we can follow this line over here on the right side, this one over here, and for the top, let's take it all the way to the top. So now for our X axis, I'm gonna be following these these lines, the sidewalk line on the bottom, hold shift like this. The other one's gonna be over there. So it, again, it doesn't have to be 100% match because as you know, uh, in real world, nothing is perfect. So keep in mind that we're shooting for something like 85% of accuracy to, to 90%. We are not shooting from 100%. 100% is gonna be almost impossible. So let's put this one right over there on the top and basically that's it. So we set our axis, our vertical axis and our X axis. But you can see over here that we still have an invalid vanishing points, which means it's not gonna work. So if we just export it like this, it's not gonna work. So we need to do some tweakings. So for example, we can take this one, tweak it a little bit until uh, we don't see that problem. Yeah, something like this, even though we are making some distortion over here, but that's fine. So now, as you can see, uh, we don't have any problem because we're having this axis over here. Okay, so the other thing that I would like to talk about is the focal length of our scene. So basically over here, you can see this horizontal. We have a value over here of 27. So basically this is our focal length. So if we export our scene just like this, we will have a problem. So the problem that we're going to be having is some uh, stretching. It's going to be, uh, this building over here is going to be stretch very much so which mean uh, it's gonna be we're gonna be having a long scene so I think that uh, based on our research I found that the best best focal length is, is going to be something between 60 and 75 so how can we change this focal length so as you can see we're not gonna be able to do it just from here so over here the best thing that I, that I found is to switch this principal point so I'm gonna be switching it to manual so that we can control that focal length so you can see over here, let me go back, check this position over here. So uh, uh, an orange point is gonna be just added, there we go. So basically if we take this one over here and, and move it in our scene, you can see that this value is gonna change. There we go. So basically uh, what I would like to do is to move it to this uh, intersection of these two axes, this vanishing point, I'm gonna take it a little bit over here. 
and you can see, notice that we're we're increasing this focal length this value over here so i'm gonna check it forward until i reach that 75 degrees so let's go even forward even though yeah something like this 60 76 let me go back oops yeah something like this will be perfect so we have uh, 67 for our focal length okay so now all we have to do is to um, export our scene and take it into blender so go to file save as and i'm gonna be calling it fspy exterior exterior scene so let's save it just like that okay so let's jump into blender so our, our first step over here in blender is to install this fspy program so this is the the add-on the 5.30 uh, kilobytes so we need to install it so that you can be able to import those fspy files so go to edit preferences and over here on the add-ons go to this top part install so click on this install over here and i'm going to be choosing that file this file over here the second one that we download this one over here, the 5.30 kilobytes so double click oops this one over here double click on it and you can see on the bottom over here that we have our model installed so which is installed correctly so now all we have to do is to search for it we can search for it over here f spy and you will find this so make sure to check this box over here so that we can have access to this add-on okay so i already did that so now if we go to file import you will see this extension over here this f spy extension so now which means that now we're able to import those files and also since uh, that f spy is gonna bring us its own camera so there is no need to keep this camera neither the cube and this lamp so i'm gonna just delete everything x delete okay so let me go to file import f spy and let me uh, bring this f spy exterior so basically this this uh, file over here is the one that we exported from here save as okay so double click on it and there we go so this is our camera perspective so if you went over here to the camera settings you will find that we have a field of view which is the focal length of uh, 76 so now i'd like to show you how everything is gonna fit in our scene so i'm gonna start with just a simple uh, plane so shift a mesh plane just like this and i would like to scale it up hit s to scale it up and you can see over here on the side that everything matches perfectly our scene so we can take it forward for example so it's like this one gx and go forward like this just move your mouse and you will go forward so over here we can do this easy go up just a little bit ey to go to the other side there we go so now as you can see everything fits perfectly our scene so for example you can hit easy and go all the way to the top like this so as, as i told you earlier we are not shooting for 100 percent accuracy but that's going to be impossible in the cgi worlds because as you know over here we're having these 90 percent sharp uh, turns which is not the case in real life so we need to shoot for something like 85 to 90 percent accuracy okay so there we go so now we set our camera into the right perspective so in the next coming lecture we're going to be going ahead and building our scene okay so if you have any questions about this scale matching let me know so i'm going to see you in the next tutorial take care